you jesus thank you master hallelujah welcome back to our session walk with jesus from eternity to eternity shall we bow down our heads before we enter into the session gracious father we come to your awesome presence we thank you once again for this blessed day that you given us the privilege so that lord we should be counted among the living thank you master for being your blessing us our father so graciously being with us in every more every step our lives our god father the situation around our god father not in favor of us but god your favor is so much upon us that god you made us worthy once again to be living our god father and to glorifying you father thank you once again for this blessed time as people are gathered here our god father we pray for your divine grace to be there with them everyone who is listening to this word let them be blessed and anointed with the power of the holy spirit you speak to us tonight once again with the life of jesus our god as we're walking with him closer god be with us guide us and lead us and take glory in your jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you so much thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah shall we go back we were there with a meeting with jesus and nicodemus we know that nicodemus was a teacher of law he up he came to jesus in the night and he was asking what shall i do what shall i do to see the kingdom of god so jesus very clearly spoke to him said that if anyone is born with water and a spirit he shall see the kingdom of god and he or she shall enter into the kingdom of god without born again experience we cannot go to heaven so jesus spoke about the clear experience of born again and it was clear to uh, nicodemus but nicodemus did not make up his mind we don't see him following jesus immediately we are going to see him later on so from there we just move on john chapter 3 verses 22 onwards john chapter 3 verses 22 onwards this is between john uh, john the baptist and jesus christ after this after this means after the meeting of nicodemus after the jesus and his disciples went into the jordan into the judean country and he spent some time there with them and baptized John was also baptizing at Enion near Salem because water was abundant there and people kept coming and were being baptized John of course had not yet been thrown into prison John is still there he is not yet been thrown into the prison now a discussion about purification arose between John's disciples and a Jew they came to John and said to him rabbi the one who was with you across the jordan to whom you testified here he is baptizing and all are going to him john answered no one can receive anything except what has been given from heaven you yourself are my witness that i said i am not the messiah but i have been sent ahead of him he who has the bride is the bridegroom the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice for this reason my joy has been fulfilled he must increase but i must decrease now let me give you the background of what has happened here jesus along with his disciples we have seen in the previous session jesus has made some of his disciples and jesus along with his disciples who are also there with him in the wedding at cana and who had witnessed a great miracle water turning into wine now jesus and his disciples were there and jesus and his disciples they were baptizing they were baptizing so where were they jesus and his disciples went into the judean countryside and he spent some time there with them and baptized john was also baptizing at the enon river near selim because water was abundant there so people kept coming and were being baptized john of course had not been put into the prison yet john is not put into the prison yet okay but jesus is baptizing and john is also baptizing right so in verse 25 we see now a discussion about purification arose between john's disciples and a jew some jew came to john's disciples and they put some question before him they came to john and said to him what was happened they were reporting to his to their guru their rabbi the one who was with you across the jordan so they asking john rabbi the one who was with you across the jordan to whom you testified it is about jesus here he is baptizing and all are going to him 
all are going to him he is also baptizing but the bible clearly says that he he himself did not baptize but his disciples were baptizing when jesus is baptizing somewhere and john is also baptizing somewhere so there became a competition now and the jews came and asked so where shall we go now shall we come to you or shall we go to jesus so also were confused and they were asking master where shall we go now what is this about then in verse 28 he says verse 27 let's see john answered no one can receive my witness that i said i'm not the messiah i am not the messiah right you yourselves are with my witness that i said i am not the messiah no one ever can receive anything except what has been given from heaven but i have been sent ahead of him i have been sent ahead of him i just came little early i came little early because he is he is honorable he is mighty he is glorious he is god he is in his highness we we have to praise him we have to adore him to worship and prepare everything for me he is he is everything and with him everything is there and without him nothing is there so he is everything so i've been sent because he is great i've been sent before him so that i can prepare a way for him i'm not the messiah i confessed it there before and now i'm confess confessing it again that i am not the messiah he is messiah i'm just a voice before him sent before him crying out in the wilderness making a way for him i'm just a voice i'm not the messiah verse 28 you yourselves are my witness that i said i'm not the messiah but i've been sent ahead of him he who has the bride is the bridegroom he who has the bride is the bridegroom the bridegroom is jesus and the bride is the church the church belongs to jesus so he is the bridegroom and we are his bride the friend of the bridegroom is john is talking about himself i am the friend of the bridegroom but i am not the bride not i'm not i'm not the bridegroom so the bride is the church let me remind again the bride is the church and christ is the bridegroom and his friend the bridegroom's friend is john so what he is saying that the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice i am his friend and i rejoice greatly at his voice for this is the reason my joy has been fulfilled he must increase but i must decrease my lord jesus must increase and i must decrease so he clearly confesses again when the jews sent some levites and the priests to john to inquire are you the messiah for whom we are waiting john confess i am not the messiah then they ask are you any prophet elijah or jeremiah or something he said i am neither of them nor any prophet but who are you and what authority do you have to baptize he said i am the voice that sent before him that said i am not the messiah because messiah has the capacity messiah has the power to do mighty things i do not have that power we do not hear john doing any performing any miracles we do not hear john doing any wonders but we just hear john proclaiming the message of christ and he is preparing the path for him he is baptizing and helping them to repent helping them to come to the lord but john had never done any wonders so jesus as a most in his ministry as a more as most had in his life when he meets people when there arises the need if you see some blind people he heals them gives them the sight if you see some paralyzed he heals them if you see some lepers he cleanses them if you see some hungry people there he he feeds them if you see some people who were eager to listen to him he opens up his mouth and speaks to them when he has seen that some people needed to be risen from the dead then the dead came to life again so jesus when he moves in his power when he moves ahead in his ministry we see he is omnipotent god he is omnipresent god 
John limits himself that I'm not omnipresent, I'm not omnipotent, I'm not mightier, I'm just a witness for him. I'm just a witness for him. If I claim that I am the Messiah, but I fail to do any work that Messiah does, my claim is false and my claim and my purpose to be sent into this world and the prayers my father had sent to the sent to the before the Lord my mother had sent before the Lord and they waited until their old age and then the angel of the Lord appears before him and speaks that speaks unto him saying that Zachariah your prayers have been heard and if my prayer my father's prayers have been heard and my mother's prayers have been heard their patience had been tested and Lord approves of it and then sends me into their family and into this world to prepare the way if I claim myself Messiah and if I cannot be Messiah my claim is waste my claim is gone away and all my all the prayers of my parents they're gonna waste all the all the prayers all the patience of my parents they're gonna go to go waste so the lord's purpose is also going in vain so he says that i am not messiah though he has every opportunity to call himself messiah and to be glorified for some time the glory of the earth will limit us into this place the glory that we take in this world god says that i will not share my glory with anybody else if we claim to if we claim to take the glory our glory is limited here the result is limited here the fruit is limited here the reward is limited here everything is limited here even our life is limited here because we stand false in front of the Lord and the false people the liars cannot stand in front of the Lord so John the Baptist clearly speaks here that I'm not the Messiah I clearly declare it so he says I have the bridegroom and I'm his friend I have the bridegroom and I'm his friend. He's going to get his bride. Who is going to get his bride? Jesus is going to get his bride. His bride is still getting ready. You and I, the church that is bride of the Christ, we are still getting ready. And the bridegroom is still patiently waiting for us and is waiting for the union that's going to take place in the midair very soon. And John says, I have the bridegroom and he has his friend. So I greatly rejoice in him. So we see here the competition arises here among the like the people thought that okay, John is baptizing and Jesus is also baptizing baptizing and then there become a competition so what, what what jesus does here let's move ahead verse 31 the one who comes from above is above all the one who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks about earthly things the one who comes from heaven is above all he testifies to what he has seen and heard yet no one accepts his testimony whoever has accepted his testimony has certified this that god is true he whom god has sent speaks the words of god for he gives the spirit without measure the father loves the son and has placed all things in his hands whoever believes in the son has eternal life whoever disobeys the son will not see life but must endure god's wrath this is what beautifully John is speaking at the his words. He says that the one who comes from above is above all. I haven't come from above. I'm will I'm from down. What he says, what he means to say about coming from above. We know that Jesus came from above. He is God who chose not to be seated in God's place. Rather, he chose to be man in the earth and then to be a servant unto the mankind. He came down. He came from above, I am from below, I am from below. So the one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth, I belong to the earth, I am from the earth. So I belong to the earth and speaks about the earthly things. Now the one who comes from heaven is above all. Now he speaks about Jesus again. Now the one who comes from above, from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard were there in heaven and they're bringing it down to earth but yet no one accepts his testimony but who are has accept, accepted his testimony they have certified or they have testified themselves saying that god is true he whom god has sent speaks the words of god he whom god has sent he whom god has sent jesus whom god has sent 
speaks the testimonies of the words of God. For he gives the Spirit, the Holy Spirit without measure. He gives without measure. And the Father loves the Son and has placed all things in his hands. Father, because he loves his Son so much, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. At the same time, Father loves his own Son so much, he placed everything in his hands. And if you believe that, Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Sorry, once again for the interruption. There's a network error. So, verse 36, we see, He who believes in the Son has God's life eternal, but he who disobeys Him will have to endure the wrath of God. We have seen the background. People thought, the Jewish people thought, there's a competition between Jesus and John the Baptist. Now, Jesus is doing the same work. John is doing the same work, but they've thought like it's a competition because they have the, they have the count when they said they saw, they saw the report, they feel Jesus is baptizing more in number than John the Baptist and the glory of John and the works of John are disappearing. People started to come to Jesus. People are not moving to John now. So the disciples go and ask him, Rabbi, about whom you have testified, it's about Jesus. He's also baptizing some other part of this river. Now there's a confusion. What shall we do? Then he says, he must increase. I must decrease. He is the one about whom I'm proclaiming this. And he has to carry out this ministry, this work that I have begun. It is for him. It is about him. And it is for you people to enter into the kingdom of God. It's not I. It's not the competition. So John is still there. He's not yet put into the prison. So from chapter 3, we move to John chapter 4. For chapter 4, right. Okay, we move there. Now verse 1. When Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard, Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John. Now who heard this? The Pharisees heard this. That Jesus is making, making disciples and baptizing more disciples than John although it was not Jesus himself but his disciples who baptized it's not Jesus Jesus did not at all baptize anybody he did not baptize at all although it was not Jesus himself but his disciples who baptized he left Judea and started and started back to Galilee now when Jesus heard that Pharisees had heard Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John. Although it was not John, his, Jesus himself, but his disciples who baptized. So Jesus left Judea and started back to Galilee and started back to Galilee. But he had to go through Samaria. Now we'll go to this part later on. Now we are going to conclude this part where Jesus here, Jesus learns that Pharisees heard about this. And Pharisees are such a group of people who are always skeptical about whatever Jesus speak, who whatever Jesus does, he was, they were skeptical about it. So they want to find something. So when the baptism work is taking place, Jesus is teaching his disciples. Jesus is teaching his disciples. This is the baptism and this is the way you have to do. And this is the ministry that we have to carry forward. So John's disciples, some of them have come and become Jesus' disciples. And many people started to come to Jesus where he is and along with his disciples baptizing. Now, Pharisees were thinking that there's a competition between John the Baptist and Jesus Christ because Jesus has increased his number of making disciples and also baptizing the people. So when Pharisees heard about this, Jesus felt that this is not right for me to stay here because this is the ministry and the ministry must go in a proper order. And then he left the ministry to John. He left the ministry to John and he chose to go to Galilee. He chose to go back to Galilee rather not to be there because a Lord wants to give the due honor that is due unto each and every person. So Jesus did not take the glory, take the honor of John the Baptist. Jesus did not try to snatch away the ministry of John. But as long as John must be there upon the earth, as long as John must continue this work, the Lord, this, and, and Lord uh, has uh, uh, given the time for this ministry, John's ministry. We know that after a few days we are going to 
explore about this thing that John's ministry is going to end after some time because the ministry of Jesus has to become and Jesus did not make a second foundation rather Jesus made everything on the foundation that John has made. So the baptism of John and when we move towards uh, the Acts of Apostles, we see other baptism stores. When it comes, uh, we will try to cover up about the baptism store. So here particularly, Jesus is saying that I will withdraw myself. I don't stand a competitor. I won't stand a competitor because uh, this is the work of my father and the work has to be completed. There are many more people yet to become, yet to confess. There are many more people yet to repent. And there are people, the thousands and thousands and lakhs of people, they must repent and come to the Lord. So let John do his work. Let us go now. He took his disciples and moved back to Galilee. So we have seen yesterday how Jesus spoke to Nicodemus about a born again experience without one without any, the person who is not born of the water and of the spirit cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So John is baptizing in the river and Jesus is also baptizing there. But many people started to follow Jesus. The Pharisees thought that is a competition between John and Jesus. So Jesus withdrew himself and he moved to Galilee. So we're going to continue tomorrow what he does there before moving to Galilee he has to pass through Samaria and he does a beautiful and miraculous thing there he does some historical walls he he has broke he had broken some historical walls so which we are going to see tomorrow at Samaria Jesus breaks some historical walls that have been hindrances that have been great hindrances to come to the Lord so we're going to see tomorrow. Shall we close our eyes and pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, once again we bow before you. We thank you for being with us and speaking to us through the life of Jesus, Lord. Anyone who never repent, anyone who does not believe the Son, anyone who never confesses of the sinful life, anyone who never accepts of your Son as the Lord and Savior, they're not entitled to receive the life and the life eternal. Father, we thank you for speaking so boldly, so clearly to us, God. This night we pray in the name of Jesus, everyone who heard and is hearing in this word, God, Father. We pray let their souls be transformed, God. Let they accept Jesus as the Lord, the Lord and Savior. And they shall be God for receiving eternal life as a gift from above. And Lord, they added in your kingdom, Master. Father God, we thank you. Let your mercy come upon each and everyone. Let the light shine upon everyone. Speak to everyone, Lord. Touch everyone. This night we want to see. This message is touching many lives, so God Father. Thank you, Lord, for answering to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you for being with us tonight. And we are going to meet tomorrow again. Stay tuned, 7 p.m. Walk with Jesus from eternity to eternity. God be with you. Good night. God bless you. See you tomorrow.